Good morning, everybody. And welcome to this Eucharist. Uh, many of you, many of you who are seeing me today, they were commenting on my vestment. I'm wearing this vestment because today I'm celebrating my 28th year of my priesthood. Three years back, I celebrated my 25th anniversary at uh, St. Bernard High School. You all gave me a good party and I'm still here. <laughs> um, thank you for all your love, for all your blessings, and especially for all your prayers. Today we are reflecting on another call, the call of St. Peter, feed my sheep. And Deacon Dance is going to break the word of God to us today. I also got the opportunity last week to watch the movie Father Stu that also reminds us of the priestly call. It's a very powerful movie, so I was inspired to write a story about my uh, call to priesthood as well. It is there in the bulletin. You can read it either from the church website or you can take a hard copy with you to read. Let us thank the Lord for the call which he has given to us to follow him and to be his witnesses as we offer this Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord tells Peter, feed my sheep. The sheep is hungry. The whole human race is hungry. Hungry for mercy. Hungry for compassion. Hungry for love. And we are called to feed these people. With the love of Christ, with the mercy of Christ, with the compassion of Christ. For the times we have failed, let us ask the Lord to pardon us. I confess to all my God and to me, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask for this merit of perversion, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, they were very obedient to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us out forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The Word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, but they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish, this was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. 
Then he said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel be given to our sins. Our Gospel today is one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites. Um, it's the part where Simon Peter says, I'm going fishing. It, you know, Peter and the apostles had just seen the risen Lord. Jesus had risen from the dead. Thomas had put his fingers into Jesus' side, put his fingers into the nail marks on his hands. They had just been through one of the most incredible, astounding experiences of, of the, that any human has ever been through. The incredible low of losing their master, the incredible emptiness of him being gone, followed by the incredible light of seeing him risen right before them. But then, as so often happens, Jesus leaves them, and they're there alone, not really knowing what to do next. It's Peter who makes the decision. He says, I'm going fishing. It seems like such a silly thing to do. Maybe, maybe there's some grand purpose that Peter is supposed to fulfill in this moment. Maybe he should be running out on the streets and proclaiming what he has seen. But instead, Peter doesn't know what to do. Peter is lost. He's confused. The Holy Spirit has not come upon him. He has received no great insight. He has merely entered into a mystery, a mystery that he doesn't know how to deal with, how to cope with. And so he does exactly what he knows best. He goes fishing. And all of the other apostles, they follow him. We also will come with you. And they head out into the night and they fish all night long. You and I are in the same proverbial boat. You and I, we don't always have that great message from God telling us what it is that we're supposed to do next. There isn't always a, a wonderful plan set out in front of us that we get to follow. We have to live our life, this moment, the next moment, as best we can waiting for the Lord's direction. And that's what Peter's doing. He's waiting. He's filling the time. And sometimes you and I need to do the same. Very often, especially young people, will come to me and say, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Go fishing. Go do the next thing that, that makes sense to you. Lead, follow where God's leading you in your heart. What's next to you? And then, only when you start that process, does God begin to really speak to us. And that's exactly what happens here. 
as, as Peter is moving forward with his life, trying to figure out what he's doing next, having that quiet night on the water, quiet because they're catching no fish, with his friends, with his colleagues, with those who have shared these mysteries with him, it is then that Jesus appears on the shore. Not before. And so they're standing there, they look on the shore and they see Jesus and Peter doesn't recognize him. And same for you and me. Most of the time we don't recognize when God's right in front of us. You know, I think that's, I've always loved Mother Teresa's quote about how she serves everyone because she sees Jesus in front of her. Sadly, that's not me. Sadly, I don't see Jesus enough. And Peter and the apostles, they're the same. It's only when they see the miracle that they suddenly realize who, it is, who is there. And Peter's not even the one to recognize it. He has to hear it from his friend John. But notice Peter's response. You see, Peter didn't know what to do. Peter was lost. And the second, the second he knows where the Lord is, he jumps off the boat. He runs to him as fast as he can. He doesn't let anything get in the way. He doesn't even take off his shirt. He just tucks it in and jumps in. Oh, that we can be so wise. That when God calls you and I, that we too are willing to jump off of the boat, to reach towards him as fast and as quickly and with our whole hearts as we can. He gets to the shore, and it doesn't look like Jesus. They only know him, as it says here, They only know him because of the miracle. Something about Jesus is hidden from them. And Jesus hides in our life as well. And what is it that Jesus offers Peter? What is it that Jesus offers him for, for his willingness to jump off of that boat? For his willingness to turn to him with such reckless abandon? He offers him the greatest gift that man could ever ask for. He offers him forgiveness. Because there on the shores is the same Peter who's never had the chance to tell Jesus that he's sorry for betraying him those three times. For in the middle of the night when Jesus needed him most for being the one who tucked tail and run away, Jesus, Peter, never had the chance to say, I'm sorry. And that's exactly what the Lord gives him. Three times, three times Peter denied Jesus. And three times our Lord asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Yes, you know that I love you. And with that love, he gives him something that none of us have a right to. He gives him a purpose. He gives him a point to his life. He tells him what his own life is about. Feed my sheep. We are the same. I love Peter so much because we are the same. I am a fool. I don't know where the Lord is calling me, but I pray every day that I can be like him, that I can be willing despite my faults, despite my wrong thinking, despite my not understanding what's going on, I pray that like Peter, I will jump off of the boat. I pray that for you as well. And I know that when we're willing to do that, that he's willing to bless us with gifts beyond measure. Today, in a very special way, we celebrate Father Bernard and his years of service tending God's sheep. He too heard that call. He was willing to jump off of the boat. 
He was willing to dedicate himself completely and wholeheartedly to the task that God had called him to. Now his is in priesthood. Yours is different. But it is no less profound. Many of you have jumped off of that boat in raising your families and trying to point them ever towards the Lord. Many of you have gone serving our community, doing the same. But in all things, we remember that, God, that Jesus' gift to Peter is first, forgiveness, and second, love, and third, a mission and a purpose. If those are beautiful, glorious gifts of Easter, then I don't know what is. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in kind of Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the God and the Son, who with the God and the Son is the Lord and Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in God and holy Catholic and the Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the mystery of God's presence among us, let us confidently make our needs known to the Most High. For the Church, that the will to obey God in all things shine like a light of truth, to inspire those who suffer persecution for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sit upon thrones or live in palaces of power, that they look more deeply to see how the needs of the poor might be met. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are estranged from the Christian family, that they find reconciliation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick and for their caregivers, that they be a source of healing and comfort to one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the gift of Father Bernard and all priests as we celebrate his 28th anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and for you, for whom all this Mass is offered, for all who gather at this table, that they recognize the Lord in each person they meet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions, which rise up in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and merciful God, you feed your flock 
with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we bring through Christ our Lord. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you at more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, forever and ever.
let us offer each other the sign of peace. I have, an ex I have an exciting announcement. Next week is First Communion. I always love First Communion. There's something just so absolutely glorious and wonderful about it. Um, First Communion this year will be held in the individual, par in individual masses of each of the students who are going through that. So instead of having one service for all of those who are receiving First Communion, uh, this year we've decided to have them just be in whichever Mass they normally attend, so uh, look forward to that next week. Morning, uh, George Fry for the uh, Knights of Columbus. Just want to announce our monthly uh, pancake feed over at St. Bernard's. 
goes on until 12, 12.30 this afternoon. Uh, pancakes, uh, assortment of uh, sausage and bacon, those type of things, orange juice, coffee, uh, uh, I think there's applesauce. Uh, price is uh, $8 for adults and $4 for children. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God for you to be humbly prayed, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thus is the house of safety, and all the evil spirits, who crowd out the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in the flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.